everyone, Charles here with mtcscreens.com. Today I've got for you the new generation of the MTC6A. This is an LED panel retrofit kit for your existing Malibu 6.5 inch and Tiger Touch 1 systems. You guys know the drill. All these boats had delamination problems causing bubbling, peeling, glue leaking, and then associated touch problems like frozen, unresponsive, random touch. Uh, sometimes we see the backlight burned out causing a, a dark display like this one here where you can't really see anything. All those are caused from the defective LCD touch panel from the factory. So um, inside this you'll see that glue peeling away and that's really what causes these problems. So there's no need to replace the entire display unit at a cost of over five or six thousand dollars at the dealer. We can replace just that part with the improved design there's no microchips or motherboard problems like you may have read online. It's just this LCD touch panel that we can get fixed up and, uh, and fully tested and you'll be on your way to having a, a better than new condition boat. So for generation two, we're converting to LED backlight for double the brightness compared to the factory design. And this is gonna be noticeable when you're on the water. In addition, we've got an improved bonding method that's been fine-tuned over the last year to give you more sensitivity, easier to touch, all around better use uh, for the boat controls. We're updating the LCD panel itself to a better, uh, more modern design. It's a 2024 production. That way we don't have to worry about part back orders, uh, obsolete supply chains, all that stuff. So we're going with a modern LCD panel and we're alleviating a lot of problems with that design choice. In addition, we've got a nice box packaging here. This is a, a late release, so if you order early, you might not have this one. It might be a cardboard one, but we have this special packaging on the way. And then we we're adding some tools that were important for the installation. Uh, it all comes in the box here, the nice metal scraper, the pry tool to help remove the glue, uh, kind of a one-stop shop. Three options. You can mail your unit in, we'll replace it and send it back. You can order just the panel and install it yourself here. We'll show you how to do it next. Or you can order a refurbished unit with a new touchscreen and LCD panel already installed and just send your core back with the provided return label. All right, for do-it-yourself option, you'll need a heat gun or a heat plate, a T10 Torx driver, safety glasses, latex gloves, isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, and of course the, the Gen 2.0 LED retrofit kit from mtcscreens.com. And standard disclaimer, if you feel uncomfortable or nervous after watching this upcoming do-it-yourself video, don't take the risk. Just use our mail-in service. It's only a few hundred dollars more and we'll fix your unit up without any uh, damage or injury to yourself. Today we're working on a customer's Malibu wake setter boat. However, this video does apply to many other Malibu boats and Taiga boats that have the 6.5 inch medallion touchscreen that suffers from the dreaded delamination or dim dark backlight problem. We will fix all of those issues in this video today. There we can see the old LCD panel that's been removed and that is now scrap and we'll have a much better design installed here shortly. We can take a look at what comes in your 6.5 inch medallion smart touch replacement kit. This is a generation 2.1, so it's been updated over the previous generation in a few ways. The first is that it's including the removal tools. So it helps you get the old panel off and clean it up nicely. The backlight inverter is now on board, so it's a one piece design for an easier installation to make it much simpler. We have an improved bonding method and many other benefits we'll talk about here um, as we go through the video. The anti-glare layer has been improved also, so you have a nice dark blue tint that helps you see the screen better in direct sunlight.
right, now let's gather up the required supplies to complete the installation. You'll need some isopropyl alcohol. I recommend the 91%. Smaller per or less percent will work, but it's not quite as effective at removing the glue. Latex gloves. Some paper towels. Safety glasses. And then a small cup or liquid holder, as you see there, to hold the isopropyl alcohol. A T10 Torx bit, you can use a, a hand screwdriver with that bit on it, the Torx bit if you need, it's a T10. And of course a heat gun or a heat plate, something that can apply heat. I don't recommend using the oven or toaster oven. Um, it can, it can uh, reflow the solder, which is what we don't want. We want to apply focused heat to the outside of the glass only. And, um, and not the inside of the unit. So a heat plate or a heat gun is best. In this example, we're gonna use a heat, uh, I guess a heat plate or a heat pad um, that you can find on Amazon that will basically get us to 170 degrees for about eight minutes. That seems to be the range at which the glue softens on the tape and we can start pulling that, that glass off. So if you don't have that heat plate, use your heat gun. Just kind of go around the perimeter where it's sort of black the black masking there and make sure you get the, the perimeter nice and hot. Basically a good rule of thumb is if you can put your finger on the glass for two to three seconds but no more, that's probably hot enough for the glue to release. If it's not quite there, it's going to be a little bit too difficult to remove the tape. So keep heating it evenly in that area. Uh, go go all the way around and get everything nice and softened up before trying to remove it. The goal here is to not break the glass. Uh, once the glass breaks, it becomes a mess, it's dangerous, and we just want to avoid that. It should be like cutting through, um, like sort of like a knife through butter situation once you remove the, the tape. If it's not quite there, just keep heating it. I always like to dip the metal scraper tool in some isopropyl alcohol to help it slip through the tape and the glass. The most important uh, part of this process here is to have patience and take it slow. Uh, go in, in steps, uh, loosen a little bit at a time. If it's tight or it's hard to go through, add more isopropyl, add more heat. That's going to really prevent you from cracking the glass and creating a big uh, dangerous mess uh, hazard there. So take it slow. If it's slicing through like it should be in this video, um, you're, you're on the right track. But obviously, use common sense. We're dealing with glass that could break. It's thin. so. Um, the objective, again, is to get the glass off in one piece without cracking. It's not the end of the world if it cracks, but it's, it's best avoided through patience and uh, following this method. All right, now that the tape has released its bond, you can pull away the side with the white cable on it and then just pop that cable loose from the, the driver there and just tilt the LCD over from the side. You can use your little metal tool to pop loose the, um, the digitizer connection lock. It has two ends to it and you basically just gotta click those away from the housing and it will unlock. It's kind of a, a snap feature. Doesn't take much pressure at all. Just click left and right side pull the digitizer out and then you're good there. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to remove the backlight pink and white wires. Those are friction only, they pop loose of the inverter. Sometimes there's a, um, a cable retention plastic a hook there. Obviously unfasten those from the hook and free up that cable. So now that the LCD panel is free, we can move on to the next step, which is uh, essentially discard the LCD. We're not going to be reusing that. We can see all that glue that leaked out on the factory unit. Um, all this stuff is scrap. We, we have no reason to reuse any of that stuff. So moving on to the tape, I find that this method works. If the tape is still pretty hot, pull it and it will release without making a, uh, a mess. Sometimes the tape is really sticky and it's hard to remove, but I'd say 90% of the time it comes off just like this where you can stretch it and keep looping it around, pulling it off cleanly as, as shown here. That's the goal. 
Um, sometimes, again, it, it takes longer, but this, this is the average. This is the most common. Now is a good time to remove the excess glue on the bottom of the housing. Uh, some units have more than others. You don't need to be perfect here and get everything, but uh, any excess, any extra amount that kind of collects on that scraper is good to remove right now. Right now uh, you can use your paper towel dipped in some isopropyl alcohol to go around and remove all the glue residue from that tape surface. We're going to install new VHB tape there so uh, having it as clean as possible will ensure the best bond. I try to go over a few times the isopropyl seems to soften the glue but it takes uh, a minute or two to kind of start working so go around the perimeter. If you come into any stubborn spots where the glue is really sticky and that works a little bit more effectively than the isopropyl with paper towel. Um, it's a bit more rigid, so just keep kind of working at that until it's, until it's nice and clean and dried off, and then we're able to uh, continue on. All right, now you can use your T10 bit driver to remove the screws that hold the motherboard to the housing. Those come off really easily. We're gonna reuse these screws, so make sure you hang on to them. On some Taiga boats, it has a yellow video cable. You can push that from the back side. There's a grommet that it can get kind of sticky on, but push it through the back side if it gets um, held up, and then pull the motherboard away from that, that white cable as shown. Now you can remove the two T10 screws that hold the backlight inverter board to the housing, and you can discard the inverter board and those two screws. Next up, we can look at the new Gen 2.1 panel. This is a new panel that has the new inverter board mounted to the LCD for an easier installation. And you can prepare it by removing the tape that holds the wires down and um, just kind of get it ready and pop the video cable adapter. This kind of just snaps into place just like you see there. All right, so now we'll take the other end of that cable with the metal pins facing you and insert it into the connector all the way. Make sure you get it all the way in so almost all of the silver metal is not exposed. And then lock it into place with those two black tabs. Try and get it really evenly, otherwise it'll want to twist or kind of come out. So when it's done, it should look just like that. A nice straight line, almost fully inserted with both locking tabs locked into place. All right, now we move to the rainbow cable. You can pull this away from the LCD panel by just pulling it. It's a friction fit. There's no locking tab or clasp or anything. And insert the other end into the main motherboard, just like you see here. It only goes in one way. It's, it's just friction fit. With the metal pins facing you, it goes in just like that, fully inserted. And now if you want, you can always clean up extra glue from the housing using isopropyl alcohol. But the main thing is you just don't want it like running or dripping down anymore. Um, into the new LCD panel. After that's ready, you can insert the metal pins through those holes, make sure you get them all the way through so it doesn't bend or cause any sort of disruption. And just an extra tip for Taiga owners, you can use some isopropyl on the yellow plug to help it slip through the rubber grommet on the housing. Now you can use the T10 bit driver to reinstall the four screws. Definitely don't over tighten these. Just until the screw is touching the, the motherboard is all that you need. Okay, the next step, we're gonna want to create a riser or a sort of a platform that will raise the LCD panel to be with the same level as the top of the plastic housing. So in this video, you can see there's foam being used. You can use whatever you like, but the goal is to get it situated like you see here with the orange cable on the left and the level to be somewhat even. Then make sure your digitizer connection is unlocked. Those, that black clip just slides away like that to be open as you see here. And now you will insert the digitizer cable as shown. Make sure you get it in the slot and push it all the way in until it stops. 
very important to make sure it's even and in the slot properly and not below the slot. So insert it, you'll see the reference black marker, hold it in place and then lock that clip down by evenly pushing both ends towards it to secure the cable. Here we can see again the unlock, removal, and reinsertion process. You can also use a tool to gently close that evenly. If you close one end, it kind of can wobble out, so try and get it even pressure to secure that cable in place, just like you see here. And now you can tilt the housing to be angled like you see here, so the cables can reach the back of the LCD panel. And very important to not apply any stress to the digitizer connection to pull it out. So with that housing angled so they can reach, reinsert the rainbow ribbon cable, just like you see there. It's a friction fit. Just push it until it stops with the metal pins up facing you. And then move on to the video connector adapter. It only goes in one way. There are two little uh, squares that you'll see that kind of give you an indication if it's fully connected. There should be two clicks that you hear once it's in place, once it snaps into place. And you can verify by looking at it that it's fully inserted. And when it's properly in, those two little squares will be visible in the cutouts on the connector. So once you see that, you're good to go. So now everything's connected. You'll want to make sure not to pull away any cables or put any stress on it. Otherwise, it can pull out. Um, really, all we're going to do here is make sure that all five connections are fully seated, fully locked in place. And we will do a test fit by gently setting the LCD panel in the housing. You can use tape or rubber band or otherwise to kind of hold it in place while you test it. You don't want it falling out, of course. If you have the ability to connect it to your boat, plug it in, make sure everything uh, looks good, boots up, test the touch response and all the zones, make sure everything's working properly. And what we're doing here is just before we seal the unit up is just making sure that the connections are proper because it's much harder to fix a connection when it's sealed up. So go through all of the connections and just touch everything. You're good to go. And now it's time for the permanent installation. So we will gently pull the LCD about a half an inch or an inch away from the housing. Um, like you see here, just so we can gain access to the tape backing strips. And there are four of them. So pull them away from the tape. This will expose the very sticky um, water resistant tape. So now that all four tape backing film is off, you can drop the right edge of the glass into the housing. Make sure you don't pinch the orange digitizer cable. And then go to the left side, make sure none of the cables are going to get pinched. Um, drop it into the housing just like that. Then you can press around the perimeter to kind of seal that tape in place. All right, thanks for watching the video. Nice job on the installation. Hopefully this helped. Tell your friends, post on the forums, talk to the marina that we have a solution to repair these problematic display units, mtcscreens.com.